Welcome to the Reader Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. I'm your host, Corey Graham. Join us here every Friday night at 8 p.m. or listen anytime via podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, to name just a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where the independent new authors come first. Author Diedra Fruget's new inspirational book, The Father's Words, The Light to Our Path, is a message of hope and guidance. And we're talking all about it right now here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. The author, Diedra, is here with me. Diedra, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Can you tell me all about The Father's Words, The Light to Our Path? Yes. It is a book really more of remembering, looking back and taking kind of a lot of life circumstances and having through time obviously been matured, but seeing how God's Word was what was the orchestration behind finding His perspective and coming out through some really hard times. And, and really, it's a book that just displays His faithfulness. It's his words that, you know, I was able to find a lot of hope. And even through, you know, years later, as I, there's some stories in there that I recount, even though they were years later, but how it was God's word um, that was that light to my path. And that was kind of why I wrote it, was really hoping to encourage others just to have that remembrance and to look at his faithfulness and to see how his word is a great counselor, a guide. And he proves himself to be worthy of doing so and leading us to him. Deidre, what sorts of readers were you writing for here? Well, obviously, it's for people who I feel like have a walk with God and need to be encouraged through journeying in this life, you know, with hard times and hard circumstances and, and also with joys, you know, just giving credit to God for the good things in our life as well. And also praying and hoping that it would reach other people that might not know him to find hope in their circumstances and situations. Deidre, what was that spark that made you decide to write this story and publish it? Well, it was kind of a 10-year process. I had the opportunity to lead some women at our church and in Bible studies and things like that, kind of facilitate that. And then I got to go on some mission trips, short-term mission trips to Uganda, Albania, New Zealand. And it just seems like every time I had opportunity to speak with women and just share, you know, of knowing the things that God is capable of helping and how he has helped and just really trying to encourage other women, they just, you know, kept pointing me saying, you ought to write a book, you ought to write a book. So I kind of ignored it for a season. You know, I was a mom of six children and six oh, wow. boys to be exact, and our youngest is special needs. And I'm sort of busy and so just needed it to be, you know, something that I knew I could carve out some time for so that it wasn't, you know, going to be a hard thing for me to do that. And which is, I, did, I had to get up at 3.30 in the morning to make that happen. So oh, wow. but that's okay. Have you ever done anything like this before when it comes to writing and publishing and all that? No, this is my first. I have and do love to write. I've kind of done some blogs and things more in a newsletter style and have sent it out to encourage a lot of people, a lot of women specifically. And it's been something that I feel like I kind of fell into because I always wanted people to have that encouragement mm. and to not just be on their own. And I just have always had a heart to want to encourage others. Once you got started on it, was it a long process, clear up until it was published and ready to go out? It was quite a long process. The writing part probably took three to four months. I had a dear friend who was an English teacher who helped edit it, and it took about a year of some circumstances she went through, which she gave such a labor of love to help me with this. And her older daughter, I think she was 56, passed away from cancer. So we had to kind of put some things on hold. And then after I reached out to a publisher, I had to go through the process of waiting, you know, going through their editing, which didn't take long because I kind of did my work on the front end. I did it kind of based on my lifestyle and what I have in, on my plate. So it helped to kind of do the majority of the editing before I turned it over to a publisher. 
Oh, this sounds like quite a wonderful book. Again, the title is The Father's Words, The Light to Our Path. This is written by Diedra Frugé, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing. So you can buy it everywhere, like at Amazon or at Barnes & Noble or at iTunes and also at traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Diedra, thank you again for coming on the show and chatting with me here tonight. I had a nice time. All right. Thank you. Appreciate your time. There's an encouraging lesson in the new book by Albert Sama, Ph.D. It's titled Success in Life. Keep the Secret Secret. We're going to talk all about this book right now here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. The author, Albert, is with me now. Albert, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me, Billy. Absolutely. Albert, can you tell me all about success in life? What are readers going to find here? Success in Life is a book that I have recently written in the vision of adding value to our present generation. It contains a lot of information that can for sure help people to achieve their goals. What sort of a reading audience were you writing for here, Albert? And so, you know, talking about success, you know, everyone is looking for success and there is no age limit to be successful and there is no gender or skin color for success. Success is for everyone. And so, therefore, this book is open to whoever is looking for the best way to get the best of his life or her life. Hmm. What was the inspiration behind this book, Albert? What made you decide to write it? Let me tell you, you know, the passion and the love for the people, wanting people to be successful and wanting to be able to help people have pushed me to put the words in the book so that and the present generation and the next generation can have something that will be an added value to their lives. Is this your first time when it comes to publishing, or have you done this kind of thing before? This is my very first time, This is my very first time. Congratulations, Albert. How long did this take you to write and then put through the publishing process? All put together, it is almost over three years to get it complete, yeah. So there's a lot of time, a lot of work goes into this kind of thing. And that day finally comes, Albert, and it finally comes in your book. You get to hold it in your hands for the first time. What's that moment like for you? You know, whenever there is a hard work, whenever there is a commitment, whenever there is a perseverance and you get to destination, I would say you get the victory. There is this immense joy that you cannot describe to people simply, you know, it's a heart of gratitude toward the people that supported you and also toward God who has given us life to be able to achieve it. There's a lot involved when you get to the publishing end of things. Albert, what did you find the most challenging part of that for you? And so first, the most challenging is to know what you are doing and who are the beneficiary and how it is going to affect them. And so once you know that your message is carrying your value, you will put yourself to get it done. I know writing takes time, the review takes time, and not to mention the finances and the families and so on and so forth. But once you have the confidence that there is a calling to add value to your generation, you will go beyond the extra mile and get it done. And now that you are officially a published author, Albert, what's the most rewarding aspect of that for you? When I see that someone can read the book and it can redirect his life or her life, when I see that young people can read the book, and you know, the earlier you get a good information, the best you will get out of that information. And so when I think that, you know, some people, very young, they will get the information, they will get the book, and they will know how to manage their time, their resources, their ideas, their wisdom. I mean, I am happy that somebody will get benefit from that book. Hmm. Have you considered writing more and publishing more down the road? Sure, sure. You know, there is this proverb saying that there is no one without two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I believe that for us to be useful and for the present generation and for the future generation, we need to think outside the box. And definitely, I have something that I'm working on right now. Well, I think this book is going to bless an awful lot of readers. Again, it's titled Success in Life. Keep the Secret Secret. 
It's written by Albert Sama, Ph.D., and is published by Christian Faith Publishing, so it's available everywhere, like on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble, on iTunes, and also at traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Albert, it's been really nice speaking with you here tonight and learning all about your work. Thank you again for being here. You are very welcome. It has been a pleasure spending time with you. Thank you for having me. Heavenly Insights. It's the new collection of personal and spiritually driven poetry written by Candace Ackerman Lance. And we're going to talk all about this book right now here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Candace is sitting here with me. Candace, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me here. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, it's great to have you here. Can you tell me all about what readers will find in Heavenly Insights? Well, I would say the content of my poems are very broad. They consist of about every imaginable emotion you can think of, being glad, afraid, confused, ashamed, lonely. They concern love and friendship with its ups and downs. And you'll also find poems about life, birth, death, and a near-death experience that I had, mm -hmm. which is my very first poem in the book. All of the poems, each one ends in a supportive scripture. And to me, that's very special because that's where the glory belongs is to the Lord. Candace, what sorts of readers do you think would really be into this? Well, I would have to say ages 10 to 100. I think they're very easy to read. It just has a wide variety of readers would enjoy it, I'm sure. And what sparked the idea to write this book, to collect your poetry and publish it? Well, I have over 4,000 poems that I have written over the years. Oh, wow. And I have just a big collection. And I do have to say that my near-death experience kind of drove me not to publish at that time, but to continue writing. Hmm. And I really thank Christian Faith Publishing for the journey that has been very rewarding to me. And I'm looking forward to publishing actually even a second book. So is this the first time you've been on this journey? Yes. Congratulations. How long of a process was this for you? Well, I've been writing since about 1986, but the journey for actually starting my first book was just started six months ago with Christian Faith Publishing, and so that's where it's at now. And once you handed things over to them and you got that publishing process started, what did you find the most challenging part of that? I don't know that I would say it's not been challenging. It's been just a real reward to me the feeling of being able to get out some experiences that will be very appealing, I'm sure, and heartfelt to just about every reader in, like I say, ages 10 through 100. I can't really say what persuaded me to write it at this time, but I was strongly persuaded to live for Jesus. I made a covenant to live for him after a near-death experience, and that has definitely been strong. Candace, you spend all that time and put all this work into it, and then finally you get that first copy and you get to hold your book for the first time. What was that like for you? I felt very humble that God was using me. It was validation to me of his great love for me. I just desire to serve him. I feel God's stamp of approval on my efforts, and I'm just really desiring to share it with others. I think it will be rewarding to every heart that it touches. Candace, whenever you're writing your poetry, is writer's block ever a thing you have to deal with? I've heard of that, and I have to say no <laughs> <laughs> to that, because when I sit down and write, I guess the Lord just fills my heart, and I just put it down. And I actually don't even buy cards hardly anymore, because I sit down and I write a poem to those I want to write it to concerning the occasion. You know, whether it's birthday or anniversary or uplifting one to them, just to speak to them. I will write a poem. Mm. And it has impressed their hearts. And that I feel that. And I just wanted to be able to share that with other people. I think this poetry is going to bless a lot of readers. Again, the title of the book is Heavenly Insights. This is written by Candace Ackerman Lance. And it's published by Christian Faith Publishing, so get it at Amazon or Barnes & Noble or iTunes or also down the street at your local bookshop. Candace, thank you so much again for coming on the show and talking to me all about this. I had a nice time tonight. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I thank you so much for your interest and the privilege to have this interview with you.
There's an empowering testimony in the new book written by Lula May. It's titled, The Lengths I've Gone. And we're going to be talking all about this. The author, Lula, is here with me now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Lula, welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited to learn about The Lengths I've Gone. Can you tell me all about it? Yeah, so it's a memoir about a woman who finds herself in an abusive relationship, and she doesn't really recognize the red flags for mental and emotional abuse. So the book is just about her journey and not really seeing the red flags. (laughs) Were you speaking primarily toward women then who were going through these kinds of things? Well, women and men. Men go through different types of abuse just like women do. Mm. Sadly, it doesn't get talked about as much as women, but they do. So what persuaded you to write this book, Lula? Where did the idea come from? The idea came from some of my own experiences and memories. And when it comes to writing books, being published and all of that, are you new to it or have you done this kind of thing before? Oh, this is my very first book. (laughs) Congratulations. It's such a big deal to get that first one out there. Did this take you a really long time then, being your first book? Yes. I worked on this book probably for about five years, and I would write it, and I would say, oh, this isn't very good, and I'd write it again. (laughs) Then you submit that manuscript to the publisher, and you start that publishing process, and there's so much involved in that. A lot of new authors are surprised at how much is involved. Lula, what did you find the most challenging part of the publishing process? The most challenging part is actually submitting it, I think, because you just want to keep fixing it and perfecting it, and you keep thinking, well, maybe I should add this or take this. I think that's the most challenging part of it. Then after all that time and hard work, that day finally comes, and you get your first copy of The Lengths I've Gone, and you get to hold this in your hands finally. Lula, what was that moment like for you? Oh, I can't even describe it, really. When I first opened the package and I put my book in my hand, I felt blessed and thankful, but I also had a little bit of nervousness, kind of like standing in front of a lot of people and doing, I don't know, like speeches or, you know, it it felt kind of like that. (laughs) So I'm sure that you've learned an awful lot along the way of doing this. So what advice would you put out there now for aspiring authors? Well, I would just tell them, make a timeline, and you put notes on the timeline, and you add more notes, but when you get it finished, don't overthink it. Just submit it. Just send it off. That's good advice. So what are the chances we're going to be seeing more from you in the future? A lot. I'm currently working on two different books. One will be kind of like a part two to the first book. And then the other book is, well, I'm working on a book about growing up in a dysfunctional family. (laughs) And now it's official, Lula. You are a published author. So when you think about that, what's the most rewarding aspect of it for you? The most rewarding for me about the whole experience is that I I just, I hope I can help others. And I hope that somebody out there who might be in a situation, I hope that they read it and they get that thought like, oh, I've noticed these flags in my own relationship and it can help them. Whenever you sit down to write, Lula, are you the kind of author that has kind of a routine to it? Maybe you're an early morning writer or a late night writer, or are you the kind of writer that just writes when you can find the time or when you feel that inspiration? Well, for me, when I feel the inspiration, I also try to fit it in. I try to do a little bit at least once a week if I can. Sometimes it's hard to find the time. Do you have a support circle, Lula, people who can keep you motivated and encouraged when you do stuff like this? Yeah, my family and my friends have been very supportive. I know a lot of readers are going to be blessed by this book. I encourage those listening now to check it out. Again, the title is The Lengths I've Gone. It's written by Lula May, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing, so it's available everywhere, like on Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes, and also down the street at your local bookshop. Lula, thank you so much again for coming on the show and telling me all about your work. I had a really nice time talking tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me.
With me now at the Reader House Author Roundtable is author David Henry Patton. He's written a new book dealing with faith, personal choices, and the journey towards redemption. It's titled, At Times I Felt Like Job, A Story of Choices. We're going to talk all about this book. David is here with me now. David, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. David, can you tell me what readers can find whenever they open up at times I've felt like Job? Well, in this society that we have right now, we have a lot of violence, distrust, anger, hate. And I address this in these books. Actually, at times I felt like Job is the first of two books that's an autobiography. It's my journey through life as I look back at my faith and how it has governed everything I do. And I don't like what I see going on in society. So at times I felt like Job, the story of choices is an autobiography about my life and what's transpired. The reason I chose the title, just like Job in the Bible, I was blessed numerous times as a young person, but I've also gone through a lot of suffering. Still, my faith has not wavered. That's how I came up with the title then. In it, I talked about many blessings I had, like I said, as a young person, but I also was in a serious car accident in high school. Nobody has shared with me or given me any guidance ever since then, so I've been kind of floundering on my own. And so these two books that I just mentioned, I've mentioned at times, Job, The Story of Choices. The second one that goes along with it, kind of piggybacks it, is So Where Did We Go Wrong? And in that book, I actually look at things in society that has gone downhill. I taught for 33 years in the school system, and when I started out, things were fine. Kids respected each other, as well as adults. We had a good relationship with the parents and everything else like that. After 33 years, however, things started going downhill. Kids were no longer respectful. They didn't take pride in their work. Parents were more an adversary rather than a partner in this life journey. I back children quite a bit throughout the books, and you'll notice that. And the reason because they are our future. And unless we give them guidance and understanding, as they are right now they're floundering in life, unless we give them that guidance and understanding, we can, can't help for a good future. What I'm talking about in these books is a return to the family values. I think too many families are fragmented nowadays. They're going off in different directions. They don't know what to do. As far as raising kids, even though I was in one of the better school districts, or one of the better schools, I should say, in the district, I found many of the kids were actually latchkey kids. They left up by themselves in the morning. They came home to an empty house, more or less. They had to let themselves back in. So there was nobody there to send them off or welcome them back in. When their parents did get home from work, they were too tired to sit down and talk, to uh, give them any guidance. And so they kind of floundered, like I said, along the way. So my books, as I hope to get them back on the right track, give them the guidance they need so they'll be citizens when they grow up. I also uh, talk about return to religion. At that time, they also give us a lot of values. I was raised on a family farm in Northeast Iowa. I was kept busy, took on responsibilities at a very early age, and learned how to be trustworthy, honest, and assume responsibilities. We don't see that in kids nowadays. Parents think, oh, they'll be able to do that when they grow up. Well, I was started taking on responsibilities at four years of age. That's what the parents need to do now, as well as giving them guidance and be there with them along the way so that they can understand that their parents are there to be by their side and be with them throughout their journey. So that's kind of a summary of what the books are about and what they can get out of it. Uh, it is a faith journey. It is, uh, like I said, some, a religion has been very important in my life, and hopefully I can share that with others so that they can repeat a similar type of lifestyle. And now, what is your best piece of advice that you would put out there for the aspiring authors who are listening to us right now? Like I said, everybody has a story, life story. They need to share that. They might not be as, as colorful or as faith-based as, as mine and stuff, but they all have a story that needs to be shared. They just need to find the right publisher who's willing to, to listen to it and go from there. So everybody has a chance to make it big and, uh, like I said, get their story out. Like I said, this has been very therapeutic. It's helped me uh, deal with my depression that I've had in the past. Anybody else who is going through a troubling times, this might help as well. I might also mention one of the struggles that I've been going through. This happened about 25 years ago. My wife succumbed to cancer as she passed away. So this sits in with the story, the title, and at times I felt like Job, because I keep getting knocked down, I keep getting back up. And in getting back up, my faith has become stronger, and hopefully the same would be true for anybody else who is going through a similar situation. I think readers are going to find so much in this book. Again, the title is, At Times I've Felt Like Job, A Story of Choices. This is written by David Henry Patton and is published by Christian Faith Publishing. So you can find it at Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes and also traditional brick-and-mortar stores. And David, thank you so much again for coming on the show and telling me all about this work. I had a nice time talking tonight. And Thank you. 
Author Patricia Thompson tells a powerful story in her new book titled Grace. And I get to talk all about this book. The author, Pat, is with me now here at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Pat, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. I'm excited about talking to you this evening, so thank you. Well, I'm excited about it, too. I'm really excited to hear all about Grace and what readers can find there. Can you tell me about it? Sure. So Grace is my actually my first Christian fiction book, and I tell you, it's still very surreal to me that it's actually in print and that I've had my book signing, and I'm just really excited to share the story. And it's, again, it's a fiction story, but, you know, there are some truths throughout the book that reflect some experiences that I've had in my life. Mm. What was that spark that gave you the idea to get to work on this? Well, I don't want to be too spiritual, but I have to tell my truth. About 10 years ago, I really believed that I was prompted by the Holy Spirit that I was going to write a book. And I've never written a book, didn't know how to even get started. And that was like 10 years ago. And then somewhere around 2021, I felt the urge to start writing and literally didn't know how the story was going to flow. I didn't know from chapter to chapter. I would really just come home from work and grab my laptop. And if there was something there, it literally flowed, you know, like from my mind to my hand to the laptop and words were formed and There would be days where I would sit to write, and, you know, if there was nothing there, I didn't force it. I just kind of let it flow, and at one point, it was maybe two months before I picked my laptop back up. So it was just really a very spiritual experience for me. Mm. Once you did get started on this, was it a long process for you to get it written and then put through that publishing process? So I tell you, you do have to have patience. Mm. (laughs) So, you know, getting it written and, you know, really not knowing what to expect and how the process went was definitely an experience for me. I would say cumulative because, you know, I get the question all the time, well, how long did it take you? And I can't honestly just pinpoint and say, oh, it took me three months or whatever. But I would say overall the process. I would say maybe 18 months, you know, between 18 months to two years writing and then, you know, going through the edits. I tell you, it was more work to go through the edits than Mm. it was to actually write because (laughs) you always find at some point you have to be just okay with what you have Mm. because you'll always want to go back and make changes. Then, Pat, that day finally comes and open up your mailbox, and there it is, the first physical copy of Grace. And You get to hold this book, your name's on the cover and everything. It must have been quite a moment for you. What was that like? It was very, very overwhelming. I mean, hmm. to, you know, it's one thing to write it, to get accepted, and to send what you believe are the final edits and say, okay, I'm done. But when you get that book in your hands, the experience, what that feels like, I I can't even put in words like, you know, wow, this really happened. I really did this. So it was one of the most gratifying, satisfying experiences that I've ever had in my life, to be honest with you. Would you say you wrote this for a specific kind of reading audience? I would say I wrote it for Well, it's a Christian-based book, but it's for anyone, whether in the secular world, but definitely for those who may be in trying relationships, marriages, and just to kind of capture their attention and also giving some hope in hopeless situations. Some situations, you know, they are what they are, but definitely it's a book, it's a love story, and it's about relationships and marriage for sure. Well, it sounds like this book is going to be a true blessing to so many readers, and I encourage those listening to seek it out. Again, the title is Grace. It's written by Patricia Thompson, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing. So get it anywhere, like on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble or iTunes, and also at traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Pat, thank you so much again for being here with me. Tell me all about Grace and about everything else. I had a nice time talking with you tonight. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to share and talk about grace. There's a great resource in the new book by Andrew Murray. It's titled Understanding Youth Finance, a Kid's Guide to Saving, Budgeting, and Investing. 
And Andrew is joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable, and we get to talk all about this. Andrew, welcome. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time, and I'm excited to learn about understanding youth finance. So can you tell me about this? Yeah, so a little bit of background. It first came to me when I was teaching a youth financial literacy course that I designed for kids after realizing that they're capable of so much more than what we give them credit for. And they were really lacking this resource of financial knowledge. And so I felt it was my job to give them the the practice that they need, and they ended up absolutely loving it. So long story short, ended up turning a portion of that course into this book. And we've reached Amazon's top 500 in budgeting and money management books three different times. When it comes to writing and publishing and that whole world, Andrew, are you new to this or do you have experience there? I am incredibly new to this. Actually, growing (laughs) up, I, I honestly despised reading. I didn't find it engaging personally. So it was my mission to really make this book engaging for our kids. Being your first book, Andrew, did this take you a long time to do? This is meant to be a shorter guide for the kids so that they can kind of skim through it and then also be able to come back and review the material time and time again throughout their lives. So it didn't take too long, but it was definitely, if you include the course that led to this book, it was definitely over a year, a year and a half, I'd say. And after that time and all the work that you put into this, you finally get that physical copy and you get to hold Understanding Youth Finance for the first time. What was that moment like for you, Andrew? It was incredible. It was really surreal. I was just really humbly proud of what you know my team and I and my family especially have kind of helped guide what this turned out to be. It was an incredible experience. And now you're officially a published author, Andrew. What's the most rewarding aspect of that for you? I think just seeing the book in so many kids' hands, I think, Mm -hmm. because this knowledge is something that they really, as I mentioned previously, they really lack it. And so now that they have these resources available, and in the book, I offer various free resources for them to go use, or I recommend those those various free resources. So it's really something that'll stick with them for many years to come. That's by far the most rewarding aspect of it. So a lot of people are reading this. You're helping an awful lot of people. Do you see yourself doing something like this again in the future, writing another? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's an absolute blast. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And just seeing it impact so many lives, is, like I mentioned, is, is incredibly rewarding. You think you'll be sticking with the theme of finance again as you go forward, or are you exploring other things? Absolutely. No, I've, I'm in love with finance. Uh, I think it solves many of the world's problems. So, yeah, and I think at all ages, we can really start to teach, even from the age of three, we can start implementing these good money, smart money habits that will last their entire lifetimes. When it comes to the publishing process, there's so much involved there. Andrew, what did you find the most challenging part of that? I would say just getting the wording right. I think that's, you know, targeting the audience that I am, that the younger age, elementary, high school age group, finding the proper wording for them to best fit their needs was probably the most challenging part, I would say. I'm sure you learned an awful lot along the way of doing this. So, Andrew... Is there anything you picked up that you could put out there as advice for the aspiring authors who might be listening right now? Definitely just take action. That's what I've tried to live by. I've had different dreams outside of this, outside of the book publishing world, such as like skydiving and running a full marathon. And it's just taking action is incredible what it can do for both mind, body and soul. When it comes to doing something like this, you know, it really helps if you got a little bit of support behind you. Andrew, did you have that support circle? I know you mentioned your family contributing and helping you out so much on this. Who is behind you here? Yes, absolutely. God, first and foremost, I give all glory and praise to God. Definitely my parents, siblings, and my beautiful fiance. We're getting married in November, so it was a great team behind me. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I think this book definitely will be a great resource and a blessing to so many. Again, it's titled Understanding Youth Finance, A Kid's Guide to Saving, Budgeting, and Investing. This is written by Andrew Murray, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing. So, of course, you can get it everywhere, like on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble and at iTunes and also traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Andrew, thanks so much again for coming on the show and tell me all about this book. I had a really nice time. Thank you very much. Me too. I really appreciate it. Fire in the Sky. It's the new book by Patricia Zecco that encourages readers to seek the beauty and peace in the world, even in times of struggle. 
And we're going to talk all about this book. The author, Patricia, is here with me now. Patricia, welcome to the Reader House Author Roundtable. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Can you tell me all about Fire in the Sky? What are readers going to find here? Well, I write poetry as long as I can remember, and I love the challenge of rhyme. My reason, everyone faces dark sides in their life, you know, like depression, addiction, loss, health issues at some point or another. And with the world evolving, I feel the need for human beings to go back to the basics, family values, respect, peace caring for one another. And I just think it's important for our children to shut off the chaos of social media and pick up a book and use their imagination. Patricia, what sorts of readers were you writing for here? Anyone that wants to feel good. And can you think of that specific spark, that inspiration that made you decide to sit down and get started on this? I can. My inspiration, I guess, is basically mortality. My inspiration was my grandmother, Nana Rose. So as I was approaching retirement, one by one, family members, acquaintances, and friends of my own age were passing away. And I realized over half of my life was behind me, and I don't have a whole lot left to go. (laughs) So I started thinking about what I've learned over the first 50 years, good and bad, and decided to pull only positive energy from those experiences and write it in poetry form. Have you ever done anything like this before, Patricia? No, this is a new endeavor. (laughs) Well, congratulations on getting your first book out there. Was this a long process for you? About a year, but worth every single second. There's so much involved in the publishing end of things. What did you find the most challenging part of that for you? Learning how to send an email. (laughs) (laughs) I know all about it now. My publishing company has been amazing through this whole process. It was a journey, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Then that day comes, Patricia, and there it is, your first copy. You finally get to hold fire in the sky in your hands for the very first time. What was that like? Surreal. And Mm. to be honest with you, right now, I'm talking to you during an eclipse, and it seems The title, Fire in the Sky, is appropriate for the evening. Looking down the road, do you see yourself doing something like this again? We'll see. Life is a journey. You don't know what the road's going to hold, but you keep on going down it. Is writer's block ever a thing you have to deal with? I started writing at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I put my pencil and paper down. I'm not computer literate. It was a pen and a piece of paper writing. And I put my pen down at five o'clock at night and I said, I'm done. And that was it. I just poured out how I felt in a matter of 24 hours. And I looked at it after I was finished and said, I think I want to share this. And so that's where we are now. And now that you are a published author, Patricia, what's the most rewarding aspect of that for you? Just being able to speak my thoughts before I am not here to speak anymore and just portray how I feel. Everybody, be nice. Final thoughts. Happy place. Even for a moment. Every day, smile. And it's pretty simple. We need more of that. We absolutely do. Do you have anything you picked up now that you could throw out there as advice to the aspiring authors who are listening to us? Don't ever think that you can't do anything. One of my inspirations for somebody else that came from this book was the young lady, 18 years old. She's There's a picture of her. She's one of the artists in the book. And at 18 years old, she is now continuing her career as a published graphic artist. And she's going to do amazing because of this book. Well, I think that everybody who picks up this book is going to be blessed by all the positivity. Again, it's titled Fire in the Sky. It's written by Patricia Zecco, and it's published by Newman Springs Publishing, so you can find it everywhere, like Amazon and Barnes & Noble and iTunes, and also at traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Patricia, thank you again for coming on the show and telling me all about this. I had a nice time talking with you tonight. Thank you so much, sir, and you enjoy the rest of your evening. 
Author Tyler Campbell has written an imaginative Christmas story with a great message. It's titled Camden's Crazy Christmas. And we're going to talk all about this. The author, Tyler, is here with me now. Tyler, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Look forward to it. Well, I look forward to learning all about Camden's Crazy Christmas. Tyler, can you tell me about it? So it actually came, well, I wrote it, shoot, about 12 years ago, just thinking of a new Christmas story. And as much as I love Christmas and I love children and, you know, now being a dad of three kids, I just kind of came up with the story of a little five-year-old kid who's, you know, just overjoyed with Christmas and wanting to meet Santa and, you know, wanting to have his go at Christmas and having obstacles going through Christmas with, you know, having older siblings. You know, I'm one of four and I'm the middle child. I actually have a twin brother. And if you ask my little sister, she actually thinks that this book is, <laughs> is about her. But yeah, just having, you know, three older brothers who like to pick on him and, you know, kind of trick him and, you know, just to kind of like to see the highs and lows. And, you know, at the end of the story, just kind of having a story where you learn to give and it's better to give than receive. And, you know, I really just wanted to have a wholesome story for kids to grasp to through the holiday season. Is this then for younger readers then, you would say? Yeah, so I really imagine it for, you know, four to, you know, nine, ten year olds is going to be kind of the key target there. When it comes to writing, publishing, everything like that, Tyler, are you new to this or have you done this kind of thing before? No, so actually, I'm very new to it. So I have published a book prior to this. It was a shorter story, more for, you know, zero to two year olds. But for this one, if I'm being honest, like I said, I wrote it about 12 years ago. My family actually really liked it. I liked it, but I had no idea what to do, where to go, what the steps were for getting a book published. And my dad, just he kept pushing me over the last 10 years or so to really get it published. And so just to be honest, it was about a, a year ago. I, you know, and like I said, I've, I've got three kids who love Christmas and, you know, I was finding it hard to find them just wholesome content in general. And so I just decided to kind of do some research into how to publish a book and, and what to do. And so, yes, it was a new journey for me, you know, to kind of learn. And Christian Faith Publishing is really, they've been awesome through the journey and they really helped me out. And to watch a, kind of watch a dream come true, man, it's, it's been awesome and it's been great working with them. Hmm. Tyler, what did you find the most challenging part of the publishing process? The waiting. <laughs> which is funny because, you know, I've waited 12 years to get to this point and to finally get here and to have to wait. And I don't mean that in a bad way. What I mean is each step you go through, you get to watch your book come alive a little bit more. You get to watch the characters come alive. You get to watch the front pages come alive, the illustrations mm. come alive. And just having to wait the process out to kind of get to the final process was difficult. But to be honest with you, like I said, I'm very thankful for Christian Faith Publishing. They really made the whole journey easy. What was it like for you, Tyler, whenever that first copy finally came in, you finally got to hold this book? Yeah, that was awesome. Something I'm going to cherish probably for the rest of my life to have my wife there with me as I was opening up the package and have my kids watching me be able to open this and just hold it, you know, and to be able to read it to my kids, man, it really was something I'm going to cherish for the rest of my life. You know, I've, I've read the book to the kids before, but to have a hard copy in hand and have pictures and give them the visuals, man, it really was so special to be able to share that with my wife and kids. Do you think you'll be doing more of this, publishing more in the future? Yeah, so actually, I've actually got two other books that I've wrote that I'd like to, in the near future, get working on. Like I said, I, I actually submitted two books at one time. The other book is called What If? It's just a short story for toddlers. You know, growing up, it's, it's kind of funny. I didn't like reading. I was not necessarily the best English student in the world. But here I am, finding myself, you know, getting immersed in the imaginations of children again and trying to create stories. Like I said, it's really just about getting wholesome content to kids. So, yeah, I, I've got a couple more projects that I hope to work on in the future and just kind of see where God takes it. What would you say now is the most rewarding aspect to you of being a published author? I think it's self-pride that I was able to do it. You grow up and, you know, my parents have watched me do countless things in my life, whether it may be sports or work or school or everything that I've ever had to tackle in my life. But to see my parents and my grandparents, just the joy it brought them that I was able to do something like this. It's not every day, I guess, you know, your, your kids or grandkids publish books. And so being able to do something that I felt, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, I feel, you know, my parents and grandparents are always proud of me, but to be able to offer a product like that, to, to do something that sets me apart, man, it was, it was really awesome to watch their reactions through the whole process. Hmm. I think children are really going to love this book. Again, the title is Camden's Crazy Christmas. It's written by Tyler Campbell and published by Christian Faith Publishing. So pick it up at Amazon or Barnes & Noble or iTunes or also traditional brick and mortar stores. And Tyler, thanks again for coming on the show and telling me all about this. I had a good time tonight. Awesome. I did too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. In His Gentle Care, Mornings with God. It's the new thoughtful devotional by author Linda Salmons. And I get to find out more about this book. The author Linda is here with me now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. 
Linda, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. Linda, can you tell me all about In His Gentle Care? What do readers find here? Well, it is 365 days of morning reflections on how to give thanks and praise to God for all of the goodness in our lives. There are also other prayers in there for special occasions, such as Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter, Christmas, one of my favorites is losing a loved one at Christmas time because that's hard for so many people mm. during the holiday season. It's just a way to give thanks and praise for the life we have. It's not always what we want it to be, but we make the most of it. Would you say you wrote this then for a broad Christian audience, or did you have some other group in mind? No, it was for broad Christian audience. It was for anyone who is searching to have a faith life and how to begin. And what sparked you to sit down and get started on this and publish it? <laughs> well, I chuckle when anybody asks me that because <laughs> the answer is straightforward. It is Facebook. I am the pastoral associate for St. Anthony's Parish in Milan, Ohio. And years ago, we decided we needed to start doing some of our advertising on social media. So in order for me to open up a Facebook page for St. Anthony's, I also had to open one up for myself so I could be the administrator. Well, when I opened one up and I realized there's a lot of negativity out there, mm -hmm. and I thought, I want to make a difference. So I started writing a morning reflection or a morning prayer. Every day as I got up, I would just sit and reflect on what was important to me and how I can make a difference in what people see on social media. And after doing that for a while, I had several people tell me I should document these writings and put them in a book. Long story short, that is what I did, and hopefully it will be a resource for someone who is looking for a way to have positivity in their life every day. I love it. And once you got started on this and got organizing everything and began that publishing process, was this a long journey for you? Did it take you a while? Well, it did, in as much as I was writing those prayers for like, five, six, seven years. Altogether, I've been writing a morning prayer on Facebook for eight years. And then about a year and a half ago, my sister kept nudging me to please find a publisher and get your writings published. And I kept dragging my feet, didn't know if they were really worthy of being published. And then she found a publishing company, which I was very happy to acknowledge. And I submitted my book and they called me probably a week later and said they had accepted it. And the rest is history. <laughs> So this is your first time being published? Yes, it is. Congratulations. It must have been wonderful for you that time whenever the first copy came in, you finally got to hold in his gentle care. What was that like for you? That was so exciting, and it didn't feel real at first. It's like, wow, this can't really be. But then as I kept hearing from the publishing company and following through on the next phase of what had to be done, it was like, wow, this really is real. This is great. <laughs> When it came to the publishing end of things, Linda, there's a lot involved there. What did you find the most challenging part of that for you? Honestly, I'm not completely computer savvy, if you will. So the hardest part for me was being able to keep up with all the emails and different steps that had to be done. And I have a lot of issues with my computer from time to time. So I feel like I fell short on responding as timely as what I should have. Well, I love the positivity in this book. I think readers are really going to love it, too. Again, the title is In His Gentle Care, Mornings with God. This is written by Linda Salmons, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing, so you can find it everywhere, like on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or iTunes and also traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Linda, thank you so much again for coming on the show and telling me all about this. I had a really nice time tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this edition of the Reader House Author Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. 
We hope to see you back here every Friday night at 8 p.m. Or listen anytime via podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, to name just a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where independent new authors come first.